everyone, welcome to Brickball, my name is Jack, and today we've got another collection video. This is not just all of the Stormtroopers, but we've got all of the Snowtroopers, Scout Troopers, and Royal Guards, so that is pretty much all of the bad guys that make up the Empire and also the First Order. In this collection we've got 45 minifigs, and I know there were quite a few people requesting this video, especially early on when we started producing collection episodes. Because a lot of the changes for these minifigs are very subtle, it took quite a bit of time to get the whole collection. But as we go through the collection you'll see that even very subtle changes can affect the price of a minifig quite a bit. Alright, so I'm going to go through this collection chronologically from when all the minifigs were released, so let's start off with the very first Stormtrooper. Here's our first guy, he came out back in 1999. He appeared in several sets, but I believe the first one was Ewok Attack 7139. He's got the very good mold for the Stormtrooper helmet, and it's nice to know that that mold doesn't actually change. And the only thing that changes about this helmet throughout the years is the printing that goes on it. All the printing is pretty simple, it's mostly black with a little bit of gray, and exactly five little dark blue stripes on either side. He's got some decent printing for the front and back of the torso, and you can see on the front chest piece, they use that spotted style to show a little bit of shading. Lego left him with a blank yellow head, and it's interesting to note that the first weapons these guys had weren't actually blaster rifle pieces that were used to them holding, but these black bull horns that were turned backwards. They look a little bit silly by today's standards, but then again, I think stud guns look pretty silly too. This is our first scout trooper. He appeared in three sets, but was also in the Ewok attack set, 7139. Unlike the stormtrooper, he only has printing on the front of the torso piece, and there you can see some pretty decent detailing for some pouches. What makes the first scout trooper a little bit unique is when you take the helmet off. He's got a yellow head, surprisingly, and a big black visor printed over his face. And believe it or not, that black is actually what you see through the cutout in the helmet. Once again, the helmet mold for the scout trooper also doesn't change throughout any of the years. These two guys weren't a bad start for our Imperial armies, but let's jump up a couple years to 2001 and here we have our first Royal Guard. The entire body is red except for that black slit in the face that you see is a solid black minifigure head underneath. He's got some simple robe detailing on the front of the torso and he carries just a regular black spear. I really like these characters for being so elusive in the movie. You never really know what they're capable of, but who knows, maybe we'll get to see them fight in the new Star Wars Rogue One movie. Moving on up to 2003 we get three new guys. Two, technically, but let me explain. Here's our first Snow Trooper. He came out in the sets AT-AT-4483, Echo Base 7749, as well as a battle pack. And everything about this minifigure is pretty good. There's quite a bit of detailing on the front of the torso piece, and I like that they used a single mold for the helmet and backpack. He's got a simple black head underneath the helmet, and that's the black that you end up seeing in the front. There's actually no printing on this piece. And once again, they still come with the bullhorns. And here's why I said we got sort of three minifigs this year. This Snow Trooper is different. What's different about him is the black hands and the different printing for his torso. He came out in the set Millennium Falcon number 4504 and if any of you had the eye for it, which I didn't initially, you can see that the torso printing is actually that of a clone trooper. I believe this was a mess up on LEGO's part, but I don't believe that they changed the printing back to a regular Stormtrooper torso throughout the production of the set, so technically this is a LEGO released snow trooper, even though he has a clone trooper torso. A little bit strange, but here is our last guy, and he is our first sand trooper. He came out in the set Mos Eisley Cantina 4501. And the only difference between him and the original Stormtrooper is this orange shoulder pauldron. And maybe the printing for that shading on the chest plate is a little bit lighter. Also that split in the printing on his helmet was pretty common for early Stormtroopers. I don't believe the early printing technique on these helmets was totally foolproof. Oh yeah, he also came with this Lego built backpack. Alright, let's jump up a couple years now. And here is our next version of the Stormtrooper. And what makes this guy unique is the printing for the legs. The leg printing matches up with the original torso piece pretty well, and he's got a different print design on either side of the legs. He came out in the set Imperial Inspection 7264, and a couple of the minifigs came with these camera pieces that were supposed to be larger blaster rifles. I kind of like this design, but I think LEGO thought it was a little bit too expensive to produce so many Stormtroopers with printed legs. So when we jump up to 2006, you'll see that they've kind of reverted back, and the differences with any of these minifigs are only very, very subtle from what we've seen before. This first guy came out in the set Imperial Star Destroyer 6211, and he's exactly the same as the original Stormtrooper, except when you take off his helmet, his head is tan. Still no face. The next guy is exactly the same as the last, and the only difference is if you look very, very closely at the printing on the helmet, that little black strip in the front is now gray with little black stripes. So yeah, still not a very big difference. Let's move on to the Royal Guard. He came out in two sets. One was the Imperial Star Destroyer set like before, and he also came out in the first Death Star set, 10188. 
and can you guess the difference from the last one? It wasn't obvious to me at first, but then when you put them together, you can see that this guy came with black hands instead of just red. All right, so so far there's not too much going on in the evolution of the Imperial Troopers, but we do definitely get some cooler guys in 2007. Let me start off with my favorite of the new guys. This is our first Shadow Trooper. He came out in the Set Tie Crawler 7664, and I gotta say, Stormtroopers look pretty good in black. None of the designs for the printing have changed, but of course, anything that was black is obviously printed lighter, so it shows up on the black body. And they added a few nice touches of reflective silver printing on the front of the mask, which I think makes him look a bit more menacing. Oh yeah, and you might have noticed he's got his first blaster rifle. No more awkward bullhorn pieces. And I think we can all agree that they look a lot better. All right, I'm gonna go through the rest of the 2007 troopers in pairs. Here are the two new sand troopers. They both came out in the set Imperial Landing Craft 7659. One has a solid black stripe on the front of his helmet, and the other one has the gray strip with the black lines. And the only thing that really makes these guys actually different is that they've got black heads underneath. And the other pair of stormtroopers that I'm gonna knock out also have the exact same rules applied to them. One has the slightly different print on the front of the helmet as the other, and the difference with them is that they now come with black heads. The guy with the black strip came out in the set Imperial Landing Craft along with those sand troopers before, and the other guy with the dotted nose pattern, which I'm now calling it, first came out in the set Imperial Dropship 7667, plus five other sets, so he's actually very, very common. So yeah, I guess the big difference for this year was new blaster rifles, and stormtroopers came with black heads. Jumping on up a couple years to 2009, we get what I think is one of the most revered Star Wars minifigs out there. Here is our Chrome Stormtrooper. He came out in a promo polybag giveaway, and this guy is just awesome. There is nearly nothing different about the print design on this figure than any of the other Stormtroopers. The only difference I can actually note in the print design is that little pointy bit in the front of the chest. Other than that, I believe the design is exactly the same as any of the other Stormtroopers. The Chrome really does look good on this figure though, and I always point out on our chrome figs, the little blank spot that is left on them. This is because of the spraying process, and if you look at the back parts of the shoulder, you can see a little bit of white plastic, and this lets you know that they bent his arms backwards while they were spraying the minifig to get the most surface area possible sprayed by the silver paint. Great minifig to have, and the chrome guys definitely always look like the jewel of any collection. Here is a slightly less dazzling minifig. This is another scout trooper. He came out in two sets, the Battle of Endor 8038 and Ewok Attack 7956. And he was following the previous trend of 2007, and instead of having a yellow face with a black visor print, Lego went ahead and made the whole face black. Jumping on up to 2010, we get another sand trooper. This time, instead of an orange pauldron with those little black stripes, it's just a solid black one. And I believe a little bit more of the build on his back is now black. And this trooper is kind of the last guy before we get a whole new wave of Imperial Troopers in 2012. There are five new guys in total, and first let's check out the printing for the new Stormtrooper. He came out in the Endor Battle Pack 9489, and though the helmet did not change from any of the more recent Stormtroopers, you can see that the printing for the torso has changed completely. And by completely, I mean the details have just gotten a lot better. I particularly like how the lines on the chest plate make it look a little bit more three-dimensional. And moving on to the back, I'd say generally everything about this printing is just better. The details pop out more, and everything looks like it's a little bit more well thought out. Also, if you take off the helmet really quick, you can see underneath he's got a black head that's got a printed on balaclava face. And the face here represents kind of what I think most stormtroopers look like underneath. Moving along, these are two new sand troopers. They both came out in the set Droid Escape Pod 9490, and they look pretty darn good. The updated detailing from the previous stormtroopers still remains the same, but these guys have updated leg printing, which looks good, as well as a bunch of splatter that shows dirt or sand. One has the white pauldron, while the other has the orange, and you can see underneath the helmets, they each have balaclava faces. And we finally get a new snow trooper, but by new, I mean barely new. This one came out in the advent calendar for this year, and the only difference is this stormtrooper now has a black head with a tan balaclava face. For the kind of mask that they use, I don't really get this, because if you want the classic black to show through the Stormtrooper mask, you've gotta actually turn around the balaclava face backwards. I don't know, it's not really a big deal, but I don't really see the point. And I guess this logic also applies to the new Scout Trooper, which once again technically isn't new, but just has a balaclava face that you have to turn around if you wanna see the black visor. He too also came out in the Endor Battle Pack 9489. All right, moving up to 2013, we get 
three new figs, but only two of them are technically new designs. We finally get a new Scout Trooper, and the total redesign for this body is much, much better. There's a lot more detail on the front and now the back of the torso. Plus, we have some good printing for armor and straps on the legs. This guy looks a lot more accurate, and he still comes with a tan balaclava face. He came in two sets. One was Ewok Village 10236, and he also came in the advent calendar for this year, 75023. Our next new guy is a snow trooper, and what changes about him is the detailing on the torso piece. When you compare the old and new printing on the front, you can definitely see the similarities, but I believe the new printing pops a lot, lot better. I also like the use of the little bits of silver highlighting. He has a tan balaclava face like before, and he came out in the set Battle of Hoth 75014. The 2013 Stormtrooper isn't really different from the new designs that we got in 2012, but instead of having a light tan balaclava face, now he's printed with a dark tan one. Not really much of a difference, but anyways, there you go. Alright, and moving on up to 2014, there are six new Imperial Troopers. And I believe all of these minifigs have new designs on their bodies, except for just one. So first, let's see the new Stormtrooper. The torso piece is once again designed differently, even though there was just a new one the year before. And I gotta say, I do like the 2013 print just a little bit more than the 2014 one. Not that there's a huge difference, I just think the details pop a little bit better in the 2013 print. I do like, however, that 2014 gives leg prints to troopers. And believe it or not, this is the first real new print design that we get on any of the helmets. I know before we got that slight update with the dotted nose pattern, but now the details for every aspect of the helmet have been updated. It looks a lot, lot better. And this is the first year we get fully tan head stormtroopers. And he's got a pretty disgruntled expression on his face. And that pretty much comes standard with all the Imperial troopers for a while. And here's another Stormtrooper from 2014, and I don't really like the prints on this guy. Once again, there's been a complete redesign on the body. This goes for the front and back of the torso and the legs. And to be fair, I don't mind the detailing on the body here so much, but what bothers me a little bit is the printing on the helmet. See, this guy came out in the sets The Ghost 75053, Imperial Troop Transport 75078, and a couple other sets. And the detailing for this Stormtrooper is supposed to match that of the Star Wars Rebels series. The blue dashes on the side of the helmet are a bit too light and they don't match that well with the Stormtrooper color combo. But the main thing that gets me is this exaggerated line on the helmet. It dips just a little bit too much and the printing doesn't actually match with the indentation on the helmet mold. Same goes for the gray bits that outline the eyes. Lego still used the original mold of the Stormtrooper helmet, but I think it looks a little bit strange when they slapped on the design for what they're supposed to look like when they're computer animated. Sorry, I spent too much much time on this guy, let's move on to the Sand Trooper. He came out in the set Mos Eisley Cantina 75052, and I really like the look of this guy. The print detailing on the legs are nearly identical to that of the new Stormtrooper though slightly changed, and the print detailing for the armor, at least on the front of the torso, I believe is actually totally different. I like that LEGO changes up the detailing between Stormtrooper and Sand Trooper, even if it is very subtle. The main things that actually make this guy look a bit different though, is all the dirty printing to show the sand on his armor, he's got some printing to show some supplies on his shoulder, and of course a cloth black pauldron on his other shoulder. Moving out of the desert and into the cold, here's a new Snow Trooper. Comparing him to the previous new Snow Trooper, you can see the printing for the torso is the same, but he actually has plenty of new updates. He's now wearing a white cloth camo around his waist, his helmet is new and no longer has eye openings, and instead of the helmet and backpack piece being one, now he's got a separate attachment which is a Lego built backpack. I always prefer when the figures have Lego built accessories, and I think this even looks better than the original anyways. He came out in two sets, one was Snow Speeder 75049, and the other was AT-80 75054, and in that last said we also got another new snow trooper this one is the snow trooper commander and he is the only snow trooper that doesn't come with any kind of backpack but you can see he's got a brand new printing for his chest and i think the parts that really make him look more like a commander are those little red and blue squares on his chest and let's check out the last of the 2014 imperial troopers really quick this is a new royal guard if you once again compare him to the original royal guard he's almost exactly the same except this time his arms and hands are a darker red instead of just a solid bright red. Also, he's no longer carrying a black spear, but instead this pike. All right, that was a lot of guys, but when we jump up to 2015, this is the biggest year for troopers. We get eight new guys. So let's knock out everything from the Empire first. Here is a Stormtrooper Sergeant from the promo polybag 
1938. And based on the detailing of the helmet and body, you can see that he's meant to represent an animated stormtrooper, which I've already told you I'm not a fan of, but I gotta say I am a fan of the white pauldron. And these next two guys come from the shadows. Here is the latest version of the Shadow Trooper. He came out in the set Shadow Troopers 75079. And even though he's not totally black like other Shadow Troopers, I think he looks pretty darn good. The body is gunmetal colored, and the printing for the armor detail on the body doesn't actually imitate that of a standard Stormtrooper, but instead copies the Sand Trooper from 2015. What I really like about this minifig is the gray printing to show some wear and tear on the armor. It really shows that the shiny gleam to this armor gets worn away with use, and it makes this guy seem a little bit more battle-hardened and intimidating. And in case any of you guys say anything, yes, he did come with a stud gun, but I'm showing him with a blaster rifle. This is my collection after all, and I get to show these guys off any way I like. That same set also came with the Shadow Guard, and he looks just like any of the Royal Guards, except the colors for his body have been inverted. So instead of a solid red body with a black head, he's now got a solid black body with a red head. Also, his pike looks a lot cooler. It actually has a trans red saber blade sticking out the front. Like I said in the beginning, this is an all troopers video, and we finally get to move into the First Order. He's come out in three sets so far, one being First Order Transporter, 75103, First Order Battle Pack, 75132, and Battle of Takodana, 75139. I'm a big fan of the redesigned armor. It looks a lot sleeker and smoother. And in general, I think this is a great evolution for the Imperial Stormtrooper. There's also a First Order Stormtrooper Officer. He came out in the set Kylo Ren's Command Shuttle 75104, and the detailing for the body is the same as the regular Stormtrooper, of course, but he now has a small red shoulder pauldron to show his command. Moving on to the new Snow Troopers. Once again, the printing for the armor has been completely redesigned. He still has a camo like the previous Snow Troopers, and the helmet is totally different. It's an all right helmet. It's not my favorite of the new ones. And this guy also comes with a pack on the back, and this time the build is just a little bit smaller. It's a single tile piece and it doesn't stick out quite as much. He came out in the set First Order Snowspeeder, as well as this guy, his commanding officer. Just like the Stormtrooper, the detailing is the same, and the only thing that changes is this shoulder pauldron that shows his command. Also in the First Order Transporter set was the Flame Trooper, which we've never had a version of. He's got unique printing all over the body, though I gotta say the armor printing on the front somewhat matches the Snow Trooper, as well as the design for the helmet but it's not that similar and I like that grenade printing on the front of his legs. The best part of him though are the weapons that he comes with. He's got some gas tanks on the back and a very simply modified rifle to look like a flame gun. A very cool minifig, but let's move on. And I saved the best of the First Order Troopers for last. I don't know if she counts as a trooper technically according to her rank, but there's no way I was leaving Captain Phasma out of this. She has a great reflective metallic looking body. The detailing for the body is actually the same for any of the other First Order Stormtroopers, but that doesn't really bother me. It still looks good in this color. She comes with a long, black shoulder cape with a little red stripe and a blaster rifle to match her armor. When Star Wars Episode 8 comes out, Lego better make a chrome version of this minifig. Alright, I think we knocked out 2015 and let's see the last of the new troopers for 2016. This first guy here might not really count as a new minifig. He is TR-8R or Traitor and he was in the Battle of Takodana set and the only thing that makes him different is this melee weapon here. He's the guy that fights Finn in the Battle of Takodana. Not really a new fig, but his weapon makes him different enough. Sticking with the First Order, here's our heavy assault trooper. The legs are the same as a regular First Order Stormtrooper, but the printing on his torso is different. It shows a heavy artillery vest. The detailing's not bad. He came out in that First Order battle pack, set number 75132. In one set, we got two new troopers for the Empire. People commonly refer to them as the Battlefront Troopers, but I really like them. Here is our first version of an Imperial Shock Trooper. The basic outline of the printing for this guy most closely resembles that of the Stormtrooper that we got in 2014, and the only real differences are how they added the red highlights, and they also added a dark tan strip onto his lower back. Very cool minifig, definitely changes up the look of an Imperial Trooper quite a lot. The other guy we got from the Galactic Empire Battle Pack was this, the Imperial Jump Trooper. He shares the same basic armor detailing as the previous guy, except of course this guy looks very, very battle damaged. I like the look of this worn out trooper, but I think his best feature is this jet in the back. It's a nice mold and I really like that they left a space to add on a printed on tile. And believe it or not, this guy is actually the last one in the collection. And before you think I skipped any on accident, let me just go through some honorable mentions really quick. This is Luke, Han, and Finn. Luke and Han wore Stormtrooper outfits as a disguise once, so they're not part of the final count, but Finn technically was a Stormtrooper, so he is part of the final count of 45 minifigs in this collection. Also, I said every bad guy trooper, and some of you might be thinking the Sith Troopers count, which in a sense they do, but I'm saving them for another collection. And these minifigs you're looking at here show just a basic evolution of what the Stormtroopers went through throughout the years. It's definitely easier to see all the changes that they went through when you put them closer together like this. 
And here's the same thing for the snowtroopers. There's less minifigs here to showcase the changes, but I actually think they improved more than the stormtroopers. All right, we're back at the main collection again. I did not think this collection would equal 45 in total. This was a difficult collection to acquire. There were a lot of little details that I could have messed up on, but it feels good to have the whole thing finally complete. All right, so that's it for this episode. If you have any ideas about what you want to see in the future, you can let us know in the comment section below, and we'll try to get that done. Other than that, thanks a lot for watching, and if you enjoy our content, feel free to subscribe, and we will see you next time at Brick Ball. Thank you.